What up y'all, Julian Gateau here, and today we are back on Chillin' with Julian, episode 13, where the mission is interviewing, inspiring individuals to inspire others. I'm super thankful because I have a close friend of mine. He goes by the name of Christian Mendez. He's a director, he's a producer, he's a writer in Los Angeles, and I'm happy to have you, brother. How you doing? Happy to have you here, man. Happy to be here is what I meant. I'm good. A little nervous because of the camera, but it's all fine. Before we get started, I just want to say... Drip check? You sent me a text, you're like, make sure to be extra drippy. Hey. I see you with the green and the black shirt, I the Apple Watch. You. Let's I see what we got. You. Let's see what we got. Show, show them your kicks. You okay, know, okay, we, we, we got we the. Fly. Oh, shoot. Got the kicks. Okay. Got the good fellow pants. Shout out Target, the dog. Uh, what else do we got? We got the groomsmen watch. Shout out Holy Matrimony. Okay, you dripped <laughs> out. But overall, I'm thankful because not a lot of individuals get to see you and what you do in front of the camera because you're typically behind the camera yes. making the things you know happen on sets from television sets to commercial sets, music videos, documentaries, you name it. And I want to let our viewers know how much you actually do. So to start all of this off, like where are you from and what brought you to LA and how did you believe in yourself to make that big risk of a jump? Yeah, so uh, I'm from Fairlawn, New Jersey. Uh, went to school in Pennsylvania, as you know, it's where we met. What's up? Um, and about a year after graduation, I was living at home, working in New York a lot. Uh, and all the jobs I had, the crew was flown out from LA. So yeah. like all my connections were in LA. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was stopping me from moving is like money. I'm like, I can't afford rent there, this and that. And yeah. so I had this one guy, uh, his name's Chris Lehman. He's actually a DeSales alumni. Mm -hmm. I was working with him a lot and he was like, hey, why aren't you out here yet? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I mean, I just can't afford it. I'm saving up. And uh, he was kind enough to let me stay at his place like till I got on my feet, mm -hmm. rent free. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was like, if that's the case, I'll fly out tomorrow. Mm. And uh, he's like, you're not going to fly. What you're going to do is drive. Because if you drive, then LA is permanent and Jersey's the temporary thing. Mm. And so uh, he told me that. And I, you know, in my mind, I already knew I wanted to move sometime like that summer. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't think it was going to be that soon. Because mm -hmm. um, I actually had like a, a time period when I could stay at his place because yeah. he had like other people coming over yeah uh and so i'm like okay i'll move next week i told my parents i'm like hey i'm moving to california in a week uh wow. i'll see you guys yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah i packed up and like drove out that's amazing mm -hmm. and i think that leap of faith you know not a lot of individuals know what it takes to really make a big jump like that it, it could have been scary like what do you think was your driving force so why you believed in yourself so much? Um, I don't know. A big part was that like, I knew I had like my safety net. I'm like, if everything, you know, fails, mm -hmm. I can go home and then work in New York again like I was doing. Yeah. Like, I have that. I might as well take the risk and try it out, mm -hmm. especially when I was gonna like be rent free for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. um, and like moving out, I remember I actually had like, a negative balance in my bank account because <laughs> mm. I was waiting on some checks from a job. Yeah. Uh, which is another reason I like, I went with a friend cause I'm like, yo, you got gas the first half of the trip. And then once my check clears, I got gas the second yeah, half. Yeah. But yeah, I moved out. I didn't even have a job or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just calling all my connects on the way out, hoping something would stick. And, uh, luckily like something did. So I, the trip was going to be like two weeks driving across the country. Mm -hmm. It ended up being like one week cause I got a job and I'm like, oh, now we have to like, you know, haul over and get there. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> no, you definitely did. And okay. it's super amazing to see what you've done so far. Yeah. And that's only been around two to three years. And just to name a few places that you've worked from then to now, mm -hmm. we have Hulu, Disney, Netflix, NBC, A&E, Discovery, Food Network, National Geographic, TBS, and much more. So explain to us what it's like to work on a TV show network yeah. set like what's that life like yeah it's funny because like they're all kind of different but they're all also kind of the same um a lot of my work when i first moved out here was like reality tv competition reality shows and that one like for some i was working like entry level so that's kind of you're like a gopher they say like mm -hmm. go for this go for that mm -hmm. um 
but I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, I mean, they're all different. Some you have like studio jobs where you're going to the same place all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of the reality shows I worked on were um, location based. Mm -hmm. So like you get a call sheet, you find out the day before where you're gonna be mm -hmm. um, and you kind of just like drive there. But it's, it's all, it can be different, but it's also like very similar. Just like the structure, yeah. 12 hour day, yeah. set up, break down, lunch at six hours, that type of deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool because, you know, these TV networks, you, you see the shows on TV, but you don't know what it really takes. You know, some of these individuals behind the scenes are spending 11 to 12 hours on sets and it's, it's not easy work. Like yeah. some of the commercials you also <laughs> done too, um, with companies like Puma, H&M, Coca-Cola, Jeep, and much more. What would you say is the difference between working on a TV network set versus a commercial set? Um, I want to say money in the way that like, it seems like with TV, uh, the money is kind of all at the top. Like mm -hmm. producers are getting paid a lot. The actors are getting paid a lot and stuff like that. Whereas most of the commercials I work on, they kind of share the wealth. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the reason for that is, but like, mm -hmm. for example, I did, um, the H and M commercial. That was actually my first job, my first time being an assistant director on like a big project. Wow. Um, and I mean, the production assistants, which are like entry level, I was kind of doing that at the time too. Yeah. They were making like 150 a day more than what I would make on a TV show. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, besides money, it's also, I think commercials sometimes can be a little more chill mm. um, because everyone has like a very set, like this is what we want, this is what the client wants. Mm -hmm. Whereas for TV, a lot of the time, like you have like the director might be able to, you know, make some changes on the fly and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And probably shorter days. Uh, yeah. Probably soon, probably. Yeah, exactly. And like for TV shows, sometimes you'll be working like a um, like a whole season of mm -hmm. the show. So you might be shooting a couple months, whereas commercials might be a campaign for like a week or two or something like that, and then it's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, yeah, it's a different vibe, but it's cool. Okay. <laughs> I, I think like when you think about TV networks and then you think about commercials, the commercials are. 30 seconds or maybe even shorter and TV network shows they're a little longer but you still have to put in that same amount of time behind the scenes like those 12 hour days those yeah. 10 hour days what what's the way you sustain like yourself throughout that large amount of time it's I don't know I really don't know how I do it like it's tough especially like I'm saying those entry level jobs are mm -hmm. like shout out to all the PAs out there like they're the ones working hard Woo! shout out um, cause usually their 12 hour days is for like the main crew, yeah. but then after that, you know, the PAs are there before the 12 hours to set up and mm -hmm. after, um, yeah, but I don't know how, how I sustain. I feel like there's always kind of a point where in the morning, maybe when things are kind of controlled and more calm, mm -hmm. you like go into autopilot. Yeah. And there's this other like vibe on set where it's like, it's almost like a sleepover with everyone or like mm -hmm. a, we're all hanging out, like we're on it together. Yeah. So we're kind of just like troopers going through the thing yeah and especially if you you know like everybody it's a it's a fun environment and yeah you have a good chill time for sure um but what i wanted to share with our viewers um that they might not know uh back in 2020 you attended the sag awards and yeah. uh you captured brad pitt's reaction to uh jennifer aniston's award acceptance on your cell phone yeah you were like only a couple feet away from him like my first question is, what was that environment like to actually go to the SAG Awards and then, you know, be that close to Brad Pitt? What was that? Like yeah, too? it was it was cool. It was like, um, I forget how I got that job, but it was only it's funny because I was uh, talking to uh, Nick Lutchko about it the other day mm -hmm. at JC's wedding. Um, I'm trying to think it was a two day gig and yeah. I wasn't going to take it because I was working. That was actually around the same time as the H&M commercial. Mm. And I had like, I think, 15 days in a row without a break. Mm. And I like brutal. Yeah, the day of the H and M commercial, I actually woke up that morning like just super sick, like flu-like symptoms, and I just was trying to get through it because it was like my first like big commercial gig like that. Mm. Um, and then after H and M was the SAG Awards, mm. and I was working as a PA, so all I had to do was like bring cards from the red carpet to mm. the uh, like social media team. That mm. was it. Um, and I I stuck with it luckily, but uh, it was. It was such a cool experience. I mean, like being that close to all those people. Mm -hmm. And then I do have a exclusive confession to make okay. on Chilling with Julian. I'm gonna, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm sorry for the, uh, the article I interviewed for. 
I didn't take that video that went viral. Okay. I was next to it, yeah. and I was right there when it happened, but it was uh, my other friend that was next to me, and she sent it to me, and then uh, yeah. they came out and reached out. They're like, hey, we have this. All the other pictures I took too, but, yeah. uh, and I was, if anything, closer to Brad Pitt yeah. than the person that took it. Yeah. But um, it was crazy, one, to be in that environment, two, to see like, because I don't know, a lot of the time I'll say, when you work in the industry, it is, and I'm sure you know too, like it's very different when you see celebrities in that environment. Mm. Like there's this sense of like, there are peers and mm -hmm. coworkers. Mm -hmm. And so of course, you know, someone like Brad Pitt, um, I think the like Stranger Things kids were there too. Mm -hmm. um, that was the year uh, Joaquin Phoenix got his like Joker thing. Mm -hmm. um, so those were all like, it was all super cool to see them. Yeah. But there's this like sense of like, with working on set, like, oh, like I'm like, I gotta be cool, this is like a coworker. Mm -hmm. And it's like the like, I don't know, just like the vibe to be. So it was like very exciting to see him, but at the same time I was kind of like, I don't wanna go crazy and fangirl, cause at the same yeah. time, like I wanna work with him one yeah. day and I'd like, I see him, I mean, not that I'm at his level, but mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know, he's just, he's a person. It's a sense like, of professionalism. Yeah. Like when you're in the industry and you're trying to, you know, further your career, you're going to bump into these individuals that you've seen on TV that you mm -hmm. used to be, you know, so shocked that they were there, but now they're your peers. They're individuals that you'll be behind the scenes filming them sometimes and, you know, maybe alongside them interviewing them. Yeah. So I think as you get higher and higher in your career, it mm -hmm. becomes a more chill environment. So now you get to know Brad Pitt, the person or- Exactly, you know, yeah. What I'm saying. And then it actually reminds me of this one time when I was living in Jersey, I, uh, I'm going to give so many details that aren't necessary for the story, but I, uh, was getting these pictures developed for a wedding I shot mm -hmm. at a mall by me, um, Garden State Plaza mm -hmm. in New Jersey. And, uh, the power went out. Mm -hmm. And so I get a call from the people that were developing the photos and they're like, Hey, we have to restart. It's going to be another three hours. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't want to go home and come back. So I'm like, let me just watch a movie. Mm -hmm. So I go to watch a movie, uh, about to, and then there are these people there and they're like, Hey, we have a free screening for a movie that's not out yet. Do you want to see it? And so I'm like, yeah, of course I'll go. That movie was Moonlight. And at the end, cause they asked what I did and I'm like, oh, like I'm trying to work in TV and this and that. And they're like, would you want to stay after? They pick like 20 people to stay after and um, comment on the movie. And so it's based off of a book. I never read the book, but um, at the end there was an ending. Oh, this is not necessary, but it's just a fun story. <laughs> at the end, uh, I just like saying like, I'm, I'm the reason the ending was changed. Cause the original, uh, Moonlight, like the screener, yeah. had a completely different ending. Wow. And like the audience was like, oh, that ending's perfect because this and that. And then I like raised my hand and was arguing how like that was a bad ending. Mm. And then in theaters, they went with the one I said. So, hey, who knows? Maybe I had an influence. I don't know. But that's not even the point of the story. <laughs> After I um, am going to my car and I see this like blacked out Escalade. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'm, I'm actually going to back up a little bit. While we were, they have like all the 20 people in the front of the, or in the, front of the uh, theater mm -hmm. and they're asking questions and stuff. And there's this one guy in the back of the theater. And I'm like, that looks like Barry Jenkins. Like he's the director, writer of the movie. Yeah. I'm like, but there's no, what is he doing in like a random place in Jersey or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I keep looking back. I'm like, it has to be him. Mm -hmm. And so after I go out of the theater, I'm about to go in and I'm like, was that Barry Jenkins? Can I say hi to him? Like, I'm, you know, like yeah. just starting out. I think this was maybe my senior year or after I graduated. Okay. I can't remember. But um, they told me I couldn't. So I'm like, okay, like, you're saying I can't, but like, I will. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Determination. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I know myself. So I'm going like down towards my car, trying to think of like, how can I like get in this theater, catch him on his way out. And as I go to the parking lot, it's already late, the mall's closed. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this like blacked out Escalade at the exit waiting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, who else is gonna have a car like that? You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a driver and everything. And so uh, I had my keys in my hand. I put them in my pocket, I'm like, my story is I'm waiting for an Uber and I just so happen to be here. It's going to come here, whatever. Mm. So I wait for 10 minutes and then I see him coming down and I'm like, Ooh, that's him. He gets in the car and I'm like, Hey, I just want to say like, I love everything you're doing. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, my friends aren't going to believe I'm talking to you right now. This and that he gets out of the car and he's like, well, then we have to take a picture. And like, I live my what? life on 1% battery. So I'm like, we got to do this quick. <laughs> 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 and so uh, we take and I, I posted it, uh, whatever it was that it happened, uh, took a picture with him and I'm like, can you give any advice for, you know, someone that's like up and coming? Mm. And he was like, just look where you're standing right now and look where I'm standing. 
Like, think of all you've done and think of all I've done. He's like, the only difference between us is like where we're standing. Look how much distance there is between us. Mm. He's like, don't forget that. That like, it's right here. It's not something that's like, you can't obtain. Mm. Um, he's like, just remember that. Like, we're talking right now. Like, you know, we're two normal, peop normal people. Yeah. Like, so that was like a cool, don't know how I segued into that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's beautiful. But like, yeah, it was a great experience. And like, I, you know, I think about that so much of like, you know, don't, I guess the Brad Pitt thing. It's yeah. like, you know, he was right there, but I was also in the same mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And like, I think there've, there've been a couple of situations like that with like different, whether it be like a celebrity or like a director or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they all seem to have like some variation of that same advice of like, look where you are and look where I am. Like we're both here. Mm. I, sorry, I remember the other thing. Um, the H&M commercial uh, was directed and shot by Tyler Mitchell. Okay. So I don't know if you know him, he's like a famous photographer. He what did Beyonce mean? stuff. Yeah. He's like, I think our age. And um, I was trying so hard to get all my paperwork done so during lunch I could eat with him. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, yeah. everyone else here is like so old and like kind of like stuck up and this and that. And uh, it was the same thing. I'm like, you know, I'm very inspired and I want to be like, I don't want to be a photographer, but I'm like, I want to be where you're at. You're like so young and like, you know, this whole set's like here cause of you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, you're the assistant director. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you're already doing it. And I'm just like, I guess <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Like, yeah. So I had like that moment with him too. And it's just like, you know, little things like that are just kind of reminders of like, you're already in that environment. Like you're, these are your peers. Mm. Like, even if you're a PA on a job, like you're in that world. So just like be a sponge, absorb everything you can. Mm -hmm. Like totally agree. Totally agree. That's amazing right there. Um, so Music is a big part of your upbringing. Um, yeah. Tell us about that part of your life and how it translates into directing, writing, and producing music videos for artists like Sway Lee, Cash Page, and Kabaka Pyramid, and much yeah. more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have like, and I, and I remember that one time we were working uh, like late night on yeah. a project yeah. and we were talking about it, yeah, mm -hmm. like years ago. But um, I always forget I have like a musical background. I. Uh, played drums when I was like super young. Uh, I don't want to throw the word prodigy around, but I've won some national <laughs> competitions. What? Uh, yeah, no, I just like, I don't know. I was in a more advanced for my age well, with drumming. And then in like middle school, I, uh, I joined like the high school marching band, which they were like a nationally competing whatever. And it was, I had to choose between like sports or music mm -hmm. and i'm like well my soccer team's not asking me to play for the high school but like you know music is mm. and so i did that and um i don't know i just had such a I, i've always had such an appreciation for just like music in general mm -hmm. and a lot of times i think when i if i really listen to something it's almost like meditative and i can like feel and like see like stories or just like i feel like not to get too woo woo, but like colors and like energy yeah. that come from it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of the times like that has helped me with like, if it's like creating an idea for a music video or just like understanding like what the artist is about and kind of like speaking their same language. Mm. I have another fun thing I want to say. Um, the Swaley thing was like, I mean, my freshman year of college, like Shrem Life is like all we listen to. I have like pictures, maybe I can find them and you can put it on of yeah. like me and my roommate. I don't know why we did this, but like we like wrote like Shrem Life on our chests, like at parties <laughs> and we just take our shirts off. It'll be like, I don't know, like yeah. college, whatever. And so um, uh, I worked on, uh, uh, on FX and Hulu mm -hmm. and we had one episode where uh, it was on. Yeah. And so and, uh, and I want it so bad to be the guy that walks them from the trailer to set. Mm. Like that was like, let me do that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I was like, it was my first season. There were other PAs that were there longer and this mm -hmm. and that. And then I had like one person on crew in particular, we won't say names, but I asked them directly. I'm like, hey, cause they have the authority to like tell me if I can or not. Yeah. I was like, hey, can I be the person that does this? And they're like, absolutely not. Like you're not experienced, this and that. And I'm just like, but I know them. Like, I think we'll be able to, you know, like kind of speak the same language. Yeah. And they're like, no, maybe next season if we have them on or something like this is like, it's like a first team thing. It's not your role. Mm. And so I'm like, all right, I'll remember that. Flash forward four months, I'm producing and assistant directing a music video. So if you know who you are from, uh, 
that was for you. I dedicate that. <laughs> no, that's mean. Um, no, but it was great. And I told Lee about it and he was cracking up. And yeah. it was like, it was just such a cool experience. Like, you know, I had that sense and I, maybe this is a point I'm getting, making and maybe I'm not making a point at all. But I had like that sense of like, I'm supposed to be talking to this person. Like there's some sort of thing that's supposed to happen. Mm. And me talking to that crew member was like, you know, trying to fulfill whatever it was. I'm like, we, it feels like like unfinished business yeah and then it wasn't you know satisfied on set that day and then like you know however universe or whatever works like it ended up coming in such a like bigger package and such a better experience where i like you know i was uh the producer on set so it was like yeah. i was you know the guy like running stuff like it was just like a very surreal like almost like full circle experience yes. just um, your timing that's the basics of yeah it, and that's really dope and I, I think for what you do and what individuals see that you do and may not see, you personally know what your goals are to you know, elevate in your career. My question to you is what future goals do you have for yourself and what scale do you want to elevate it to? I guess future goals are, so like since I was younger, I feel like my goal has always been to be like a writer I, before I even knew what that was. Mm -hmm. Like I, um, I have like these like notebooks that are back in my house, but when I was younger, I like always wrote stories. And then I remember saving up to buy like a camera and I'd like film my toys, like acting them out and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, as I get older, I realize like, you kind of like chip away and see like what it is exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and I'm still chipping away and figuring out like what that exact thing is mm -hmm. and trying to be open-minded with like, if that changes one way or another. Mm -hmm. So I think generally it's still uh, a showrunner. Like mm -hmm. I wanna make my own show like a Dave, like short comedy type mm -hmm. thing. Um, so I guess my, my goal really is to make something like that. But I think um, a good thing to have with goals is to make it something that's not tangible. Mm. That way you always, or not like a checkpoint. You know, it's good to, I guess it's good to have checkpoints, but it shouldn't be like the exact goal. So mm -hmm. like if I want to be a showrunner, you know, work a couple years, whatever, I get a show and I'm a showrunner on it, then it's, I'm assuming I'm going to, cause this is like, I feel like this always, it's like, now what do I do? Like I'm here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like what now? But if it's something that you're never able to obtain, it's more like a, I don't want to say lifestyle, but it's like something that like is part of you. You keep chasing Like if you it. have a, yeah, like if you have a goal that you always want to, or I need to think of a better way to write, uh, say this. Um, I guess if my goal would be like to entertain people with something funny, it's mm -hmm. like, I can do that in my life every single day. And if I do that all the time, I know like the checkpoint of being a showrunner will come. Mm -hmm. And so I know I've, I've told you this before and I, I tell a lot of people like, if no matter what you're going to get to your destination, like what's the most fun way to get there mm -hmm. or how are you going to enjoy it the most? So for me right now is, um, like stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and so there are a lot of writers. There's one guy, uh, he passed away recently actually, Jack Knight. Um, but he was like one of my favorite comedians. And um, I don't think he ever had like much writing experience, mm -hmm. but he just did stand-up. And then he was one of the head writers on Big Mouth and some other shows. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, he's already doing that thing. He's making people laugh. He's like entertaining them and like working on his craft. And that led him to this other thing. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, I want to be a showrunner. I'll be like a PA and I'll work my way up the ladder. But mm -hmm. like, for me, it's like, you're waiting for something to happen where you can be doing the thing always. So um, whatever your question was, I hope that answered. No, it definitely <laughs> did. And I think for our viewers here that see what you've done and see, you know, to the level you've took it and where you came from, mm -hmm. my question to you is like, what would you, advice be to individuals who want to do what you're doing and you know kind of really don't know where to start yeah um i would say like a couple things one like remember or no i'm gonna rewind a little bit uh i'd say just to i guess just to do it take any like this is the advice that was given to me that helped a lot um like take any job you can mm -hmm. Um, when you're first starting out, for sure. 
because they're always going to lead to something. Someone always knows someone. There's like so many connections, especially if you're in an environment like LA or New York or something where like it's like the hub for this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you can, what's the phrase? Like a shot in the dark, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just like go for it and something will happen. But at the same time, like, don't be so work crazy. Mm at least not for a long period of time. Yeah. I know when I first moved out here, I was very, very work obsessed and like that got me to excel a little bit, but then there's a point where you kind of just like lose yourself a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you have to remember that like, you know, you're still living, you're still like, this is life. You have to do things that like excite you or do things that like your heart tells you to do. Mm -hmm. um, and like one example, I won't like name drop, but I have this, um, this program I found like uh, over a year ago now, because with freelancing, you have a lot of time off. Mm -hmm. And like during my time off, especially after like working, you know, some big job and you're like, have so much responsibility. When that season ends, it's like, you're like, well, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. um, and so I was experiencing that all the time with jobs, like ending and not having anything for like a week or two. And I'm like, what, like, what is life? Like, yeah. <laughs> what am I without work? And so I try to think back to like college and times where I felt like really good and stuff. And a lot of it was like on the track team when we'd volunteer for stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, let me look for something that I want to do that's like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, what do I like? I'm like, I like dogs. Maybe I should look at a shelter. I like like teaching kids stuff. I was like a track coach for like little kids at one point. I'm like, mm -hmm. let me find something. I found this great program called Canine Youth Alliance. Mm -hmm. And they teach... Uh, we teach kids, it actually starts tomorrow, the new season of it. We teach kids how to train dogs mm -hmm. uh, from the shelters. So that way they can be like adopted uh, or they have a better chance of being adopted. Um, and so I've been doing that for a year now. And at the end of the year, we always like, you know, all the uh, volunteers, like we'll get drinks and whatnot. And it was recently we were getting drinks and someone from the program, um, they weren't really saying, I don't even know if I should say this. I don't know. Maybe we'll cut it out. But um, we were all talking about what we do and this and that. And he was being like very secretive kind of and like nonchalant about what he does. Mm. And then he left and someone was like, you, ask, you have to ask him about your job because I know you want to write and this and that. I'm like, okay. And then I finally got it out of the guy and it turns out he's like a head writer. What? And he's, yeah. And he just does this because he has, I guess, a lot of time, makes yeah. a lot and whatever. But it's like... I wish I could give a shortened version of that without like blowing his spot up, but um, it's crazy. I guess the the moral of this story to me was like, I'm doing something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with television. It has nothing to do with like my work or anything. It's just something that like feels good mm -hmm. and feels to like align with like things I like to do, like yeah. hang out with dogs. Mm -hmm. And even that, you know, just led me to this insane connection mm. and not to say you know anything's going to come out of it but i think it's just like a good tell for like if you you know just kind of listen to yourself and do things you want like yeah. things are going to attract always like things are always going to come mm -hmm. so i don't know that's super dope <laughs> and i think what i would like to share with you yeah um on chilling with julian as you know we like to showcase our guests and what they do best um, since the majority of what you do is behind the scenes oh. and often requires an NDA, we like to gift you oh. with <laughs> an accomplishment to highlight all the dope companies and networks you've worked for, mainly <laughs> to acknowledge to you and our viewers how much you've done in such a short amount of time and to remind you to keep going and continue to be an inspiration. So, uh, with Julie, I'm like not behind the pillow. It's always behind the pillow. Open it up. Man, show, thank you so much. I appreciate show it. Show the viewers what you got. That's Rip so it open. Cool. Um, this is just a, a big, you know. The thank team you. did a great job at wrapping this. <laughs> hey, oh, I love this. What? Yo, this is. <laughs> <laughs> This is a collage of all of the companies that Christian has worked for. There's much more that he's worked <laughs> for, and we just want to thank you for, you know, continue to be an inspiration, not only I really for appreciate that, me, man. but for individuals out there. Thank you um, so much. Keep going, keep grinding. This is a show to share, like, inspiring individuals, inspiring others. You inspire me, you inspire our other friends. We have JC out there, we have Angel out there, we have everyone that 
are in the industry that you inspire. So thank you guys for tuning in. Continue to be an inspiration. Christian Mendez, <laughs> I call him C. Mendez. He's continued to do great things in Los Angeles as a director, writer, and producer. Keep going, my brother. And you guys, as always, stay inspired.